Well, good Saturday afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great Saturday afternoon. Uh, we got, of course, our game tonight. Oh, I can't wait to see the Cowboys versus the Detroit Lions. I'm getting ready to go over and get my chicken wings and get, uh, we're going to do some corned beef. We're going to get corned beef and sauerkraut because we're going to be making some Rubens, Ruben subs for tonight's game. My uh, Michael Anthony Fitness Reaction Gig Economy and da 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 da. Damn Gina are both going to be here for the game as well tonight, which should be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see the Cowboys see how they respond, see if they can get back on track and get our 11th win as well as our 16th win at home. So there you go, and keep hope alive for getting maybe the number two seed and maybe let's get crazy and say maybe even the number one seed that it's possible anything is possible anyway i want to share um i've been doing youtube uh really uh, the first channel was 2012 i didn't do a whole lot on it till about 2016 and 2016 i think i had about 300 uh subscribers until dak prescott uh, became the starting quarterback in a video that I had done months before um, about Dak Prescott, and he'd be the perfect quarterback for the Cowboys. After the Senior Bowl, finally started taking root, and by that October 10th, my birthday, I had my first 1,000 subscribers. And so um, since that time, it's been growing and growing and become uh, part of my daily life being part of YouTube. And I will say that the greatest moment, greatest experience that I think I ever had was actually being able to talk to Jimmy Johnson, um, interviewing him before he was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And I want to share this with you guys because, you know, unfortunately, Jerry Jones wanted all the credit for building the team. As he put it, any number of 500 coaches could have coached the team that um, I put together. And the reality is, is <laughs> there isn't 500 coaches that could coach any team to a Super Bowl. It's hard to win a Super Bowl. And it's not just having the coaches. You need everything to go right to become a Super Bowl champion. You need the players to stay healthy. You need the ball to bounce the right way. You need the right calls that are being made by the officials. And sometimes you get just some luck. And no one coach has won a Super Bowl without having support of a front office. And that's where the two of them were intertwined and won the Super Bowls together. And for me to be able to actually talk to Jimmy Johnson was an honor that I will always cherish. But the way they built that team, I want you to listen to Jimmy Johnson in his own words right now, if you don't mind. Mark, you're up, and then James Harris. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, let me first say congratulations on getting into the Hall of Fame. Uh, watching that live on television, that raw emotion was just beautiful. Um, I have so many questions for you. I think about the only way I could get them in is to get a cooler beer and head out on, <laughs> and go fishing with you. <laughs> Hi, Mark. But um, leaving the University of Miami and coming to the Dallas Cowboys, and at that time they were basically broke, busted, and thoroughly disgusting to watch. Having gone from the pinnacle down to the depths, what was that like? And the second part of this question would be, I uh, played football at JMU with Charles Haley and knowing the character that he is and all the personalities that you had with the Cowboys, how were you able to mold them and keep them focused on the grand prize, which was winning? Well, you know, first of all, you know, you know, people look back on it and, and they say it was an easy decision to leave University of Miami. You know, but, you know, we had gone through four straight seasons where we played a national schedule and been on national television every other week and only lost two regular season games. And so we had a powerhouse football team and I knew it was going to continue that way because we had a great, you know, group of talent. And then going to Dallas, you know, Tom Landry's one of the greatest coaches of all time. Mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, they had had three straight losing seasons there at the bottom of the NFL at three and 13 because they just didn't have any talent. And, you know, and obviously there were some older players that uh, helped us, uh, you know, in winning our Super Bowls. But a lot of it had to do with 
you know, I, I brought in Tony Wise, my offensive line coach, and he he put together what is considered one of the greatest offensive lines in, in NFL history. But he did it with a, a free agent defensive tackle, Mark Tuanay, at left tackle. He did it with a left guard where the previous stats, staff said get rid of him because he was too fat, Nate Newton. <laughs> we took a, a third round pick, a 245 pound offensive guard. I asked Tony, I said, can you convert him to a center? He said, I'll make him into a center. So we moved St uh, Stepnoski to center. Uh -huh. And then we took a seventh round pick, Kevin Gogan, uh, who had struggled his early years. We moved him to guard and took a third round pick, Eric Williams at right tackle. So, you know, those players hadn't developed, but Tony Wise was able to develop them into a great offensive line. And so, you know, the combination of having some great assistant coaches and acquiring a lot of talent with 51 trades in five years, we were able to win that Super Bowl. So it was a great feeling. Thank you very much for that. I'll follow up about Charles Haley. Yes, he was a character. <laughs> he, he was a, a character, character but he is one of my favorites. Uh, uh, you know, Charles and I developed a great relationship after a few of rocky roads uh, there early in his career at Dallas. Uh, we had a couple of run-ins, but we, we really got together. You know, really, he came into my office after I had berated him a, a couple of times at, at one of the ball games, and he said, Coach, he said, if you will just – get on to me one-on-one -on -one in your office. He said, I'll do anything in the world for you. I, I love playing for you. He said, but just don't embarrass me in front of the other players. And I said, you know, Charles, I, I may not always be able to do that, but I'll try. But from that time forward, we had a great relationship. And he was a big part of us winning Super Bowls. Thank you very much. And how about them Cowboys? <laughs> I should have trademarked that. <laughs> <laughs> James Harris. That was incredible to be able to talk to Jimmy Johnson and I would love to get a cooler of beer and go out fishing with him. That would be amazing to listen to the stories and everything and all the knowledge that he has about football. He has probably forgotten more about football than more people that than most coaches out there actually know. He was that good and uh, that was truly a blessing and I am so happy that finally Finally, he will be in the Dallas Cowboys ring of honor and can't wait to see that tonight. So I hope you guys tune in. We'll be live streaming. Uh, the game will probably start out about 8 o'clock or so, maybe even a little early. It might start out at 7.30 or so uh, just to get this thing going. I'm doing some work here at the Red Brick House uh, to try and make the place even nicer uh, to really turn this into a home. And as always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys as well as you ladies. And keep... Keep the positive flow for the Dallas Cowboys going. I'm Mark Holmes, and I will see you guys real soon.